Hello and welcome to my first alcohol markers tutorial and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to use your alcohol markers and I'm going to show you which colors to use uh, if you want to achieve these kind of colors and in this case it's going to be a lightish skin color I think it's going to be my next tutorial uh, on which I'm going to show you uh, how to achieve a darker color and I think it's going to be um, Esmeralda from the Hunchback of Notre Dame uh, because she actually has a very dark color and that's what I wanted but yeah uh, here I'm gonna show you how to achieve this um, skin tone um, and these kind of colors I think they are very uh, bright and vivid and I love that um, we're gonna be working with uh, whatever alcohol markers that you may have, whatever brand that you may have, because they're very expensive. I am mainly working with um, Pro markers, which are, in my opinion, very good and not as expensive. And some, like the minority of my markers, are actually uh, Copic Sketch uh, uh, alcohol markers. These are expensive, but it's just like I have only a few of them because they're expensive and like uh, I also have some um, Copic Chow markers which is you know it's expensive as well but m uh, most of my markers are actual pro markers and if you have another brand I'm gonna be showing you uh, in a few moments the actual uh, color palette that uh, color palette that I used uh, for this drawing. First of all, I'm going to sketch the um, drawing. Then I'm going to ink it using. You can either use uh, micron pens or um, pit pens from um, Faber Castell, or you know any other kind of pens, whatever you prefer. And once, uh, once it's inked, I'm going to use my alcohol markers. But first, I'm going to actually um, draw some kind of studies, I would say, to know which colors I want to use. Uh, as you can see here, for uh, the skin color, I'm going to use. Um, I'm going to draw very, very quickly a very ugly. Um, character. I wanted to use a dark color for uh, Jasmine because I was like thinking that she's gonna be very dark but then I saw some uh, steals from the the actual movie and realized that she's kind of medium skin like even like kind of uh, light skin so yeah that's why I used something lighter so yeah uh, once you have all your different tones and colors and everything, then you're gonna begin the actual uh, drawing. So, these are the colors that I'm going to be using. Uh, they are kind of peachy for the lighter tones, and, uh, and I also have some purple tones for the shadows. Uh, so, first of all, I'm going to begin by placing my lightest uh, my lightest color because that's how I like to go from lightest to darkest I think that's that looks better so my second layer is going to be my second lightest color which you know it's it's a light color but it's not as light as the first one which is kind of logical and those are like my first shadows very light and subtle shadows but you know they begin to be there. My third layer is going to be the blush layer and that's you know especially for light skin it looks good to add some reddish tones on the places of the face where you have some reddish tones like you know naturally I would say which are like the the cheeks and the tip of the nose. Then I began I, I continue to work on my shadows and uh, I begin to use my purple uh, tones for the deepest shadows and also for the eyelids because uh, I like, if it's a girl, I like how it looks when, you know, the, the eyelids are kind of darker. 
so for the shadows and the highlights and everything, it's very useful if beforehand you determine from which side the light is going to be coming and hitting the the character um, and you know the the face, the whole body and everything because otherwise it's kind of difficult it, it can be difficult to remain faithful and logical to stay logical with lighting and shadows and like it can actually be a mess afterwards because you're gonna have the shadows like and the light coming from everywhere and it's not going to to look very good so uh, another thing is that, as you can see, I like to work on, like, very slowly, <laughs> actually, I am very slow, uh, and, like, I only begin, um, let's say, with the face, and I only do the face, like, I am going to lay my first layer on the face, and do all my layers on the face only, because if you lay your entire uh, layer on the whole uh, on the whole drawing like I don't know the whole body um, and then you come back with your second layer the first layer it's you know is going to be dry and it's very difficult to blend in the second layer if the first one is dry because the ink is dry and blending your second color with an ink that's already dry is extremely difficult so just you know it's going to be a lot easier if you just go very slowly and you do the the fur, the, the face or the arm or whatever uh, you know whatever you prefer first and then you go to the neck and to the shoulders and the arms and whatever that's how you should work with um alcohol markers because otherwise you know the ink can dry very very fast Especially if you're not working on um, alcohol marker paper, because there's a paper that's going to be special for alcohol markers, uh, and that's going to help you a lot. But even when you're using that paper, it's not a good idea to uh, do a you know a first layer all over the like the the body or the drawing or whatever. And then just come back with, with another um, marker because, like I was saying, it's extremely difficult. So, um, as you can see, sometimes I'm going to, you know, I'm going back to the face and like, okay, I forgot to add this here and stuff like that. Because uh, when the first layers that you have placed begin to dry and that's a good thing when they begin to dry but you want them to dry together not just one layer you can actually begin to see if there's something that's missing uh, that is missing if you need to add something else uh, or like if you need to deepen the shadows or the blush or whatever so yeah like i am going back to the shadow to the face because uh i'm adding some Highlights, which I I love highlights. So, so yeah, um, and then I am adding some shadows to the to the lips, and here I'm going to. Uh, this is the the last part of the body that I hadn't touched, uh, and adding some more blush to the uh, left hand there. Um, so yeah, just um, do not rush your how you work and your whole process because it's you, you don't have to do things very quickly uh, you are supposed to enjoy this um, I'm going back to the uh, belly with my uh, shadows and some blush again <laughs> and just blending everything in because like I was saying once it's dry you can go back and build another whole set of layers just to give more depth to your whole um, character so yeah adding more uh, blush to the uh, hand to the uh, right hand um, it, and as you can see I'm trying <laughs> 
I am like it, I'm not always successful, but I am trying to remain faithful to my lighting source, which is coming. You know, you can see that my lights are coming from the uh, from the right. I hopefully you can see that, uh, and my shadows are supposed to be on the left side. It's, that's how I liked it for this uh, drawing. I was working with a reference, which is a an actual picture from the movie, which I think those are called, you know, uh, stills, which is, you know, a picture. Uh, and some people say that working with references is like cheating, and I do not agree. I think it's very important to work with uh, references because it's... I think it's just normal, like, yeah, why not? I mean, that's that's not cheating. Anything, like, if, anyway, <laughs> if you are drawing, if you're trying to be creative, I don't see how you can be cheating. It's not, it's not a history test at school. You, there's no cheating anyway. But um, using references is actually very important because you have to develop uh, the way you see, I would say. Oh, I'm going back to the face and adding more shadows to give more uh, more depth to the, the skin. So yeah, there you have it. But yeah, like I was saying, I think it's very important to use references and to use pictures. And, you know, especially if you're drawing um, people, even if you're not drawing people or, or painting people, um, and you're like doing landscapes or whatever, I think it's very important because, yeah, I don't know. It's just logical, I would say. So here I'm, um, well, this is not the skin. I'm no longer doing the skin. Um, these are the clothes, and as you can see, I'm working pretty much in the same way. I am working on small surfaces very slowly, and... I am laying and layering my colors in the same way, from lightest to darkest. I also try, like I was saying, when I'm thinking from which um, side my light is going to be uh, coming, I am I try to keep some um, places pretty much white and trying not to color in those places because I like how it looks. Like, you can see that on the... On the thighs, you know, the, her clothing, um, her pants, you, you can actually see some blank spaces. And that's because, because I left that part white, because I like it. And because it, I think it looks better, you know, for the lighting and everything. And it's going to add even more depth. And if you want to add more light, you can always use a um, white coloring pencil or a white uh, gel pen. I love those. They are very useful. Uh, and I'm going back to my skin, actually, uh, and adding more... You know, it's I'm, I'm using the same colors that I was using from the beginning. Uh, I haven't, you know, added anything more to my palette, but I'm just deepening my, my colors, and especially my uh, shadows. Now I'm working on... I don't remember <laughs> what her pet uh, tiger, uh, you know, uh, his name, what his name is. I think it's it's a boy. I don't know. <laughs> so, yeah, I think it's a male tiger. I don't know. So, yeah, I just forgot uh, its name. <laughs> so, uh, I'm working on him or her. Well, let's say him. Uh, and it was very cool working with uh, Orange because it's not... A, um, personally, it's not a color that I use as often, I don't know why, but I love those bright colors, and yes, so I'm working on him, and like I was saying, it's always the same thing, I don't care if, you know, personally, I don't care if it's human skin, or clothing, or fur, in this case, you know, it's an animal, I am be, uh, I'm going to be working from lightest to darkest, which is what I'm doing here. 
Um, another thing, and I think you were able to see that uh, with Jasmine, is that I don't like to use black, like the actual black color, even though people's, yeah, you know, black is not supposed to be a color. But I don't like to, to use black when I'm using my um, alcohol markers, on, or even when I'm painting with watercolors or acrylics or whatever I don't like to use black because I think it's very it looks very flat so she she's to uh, she is supposed to have a very very dark um, hair color you know she has black hair but I wouldn't like it you know if I were to add just black to her because it looks very flat. So what I did is, uh, her uh, hair is a mix of indigo blue, which is a very very dark blue. It's like almost black, but it's actually bl uh, blue. So that's for the lightest parts of her hair, and I'm doing the same with the the tiger's ears. I think he's called Raja, Raja, something like that. Yeah. So uh, I began by adding indigo blue to the dark uh, to the black parts and then I blend in a very very dark gray tone like extremely dark um, looks almost black I think it looks good like that uh, and that you, you can see that's the the gray color you know the very dark gray color but it doesn't look flat like that in my opinion it looks like, you know, kind of just not flat. <laughs> it has a kind of depth, I would say. So I like that. Um, so I, I do not recommend that you guys use black when you're using your markers or painting or coloring pencils or whatever. Black, like whatever you think is going to be black, like very dark hair or even black clothing or stuff look around you, black things are never black. They are very dark, but not actually black. So yeah, that's, you know, my two cents. That's what I believe. Uh, and yeah, that was the four. And it's pretty much done. Uh, it was very nice working on this. I had lots of fun. I'm doing her eyes now. And that's it. That's, uh, you know, this is the final image. And I hope you guys liked it. And it was useful, <laughs> you know, that you learned something. So yeah, thank you for watching.